Welcome to our video on inductors. Today, we'll explore this incredible electronics component and discover how it works. So, let's get started. Imagine you have a wire that can store energy in a very special way. When an electric current flows through this wire, it creates something amazing called magnetic field, and a small amount of magnetic energy is temporarily stored in this field. The electric and magnetic fields are perpendicular to each other. This phenomenon can be visualized if we place compasses around the wire. When electric current flows through this wire, the needles will align in a circle due to the presence of magnetic field. But here's the twist, if we call the wire into spiral shape, the magnetic field becomes concentrated and aligned in a way similar to a magnetic bar. That's when our ordinary wire becomes an inductor. This inductor can now store more magnetic energy in its concentrated magnetic field while electric current flowing through it. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell, so you never miss any update. An inductor can be measured in terms of inductance, and the standard unit is Henry. This unit is named after Joseph Henry who has made remarkable discoveries in electromagnetic coils and induction. But what does the unit, Henry, actually tell us? Well, it represents the maximum amount of energy that an inductor can store in its magnetic field when electric current flows. For example, the higher the inductance means the inductor can generate a stronger magnetic field to temporarily store more magnetic energy. Now, let's look into the factors that can affect the inductance value or, Henry. First, it is the number of turns in an inductor. More turns mean higher inductance because the magnetic field becomes more concentrated and stronger, allowing the inductor to store more magnetic energy. Moving on, the length of the coil also plays a role. Imagine two coils with the same number of turns but different lengths. The shorter coil will have a more concentrated magnetic field and higher inductance. Conversely, the longer coil will have lower inductance. Next, the other factor is the cross-sectional area of the inductor. A larger cross-sectional area provides more space for the magnetic field to spread out and expand over a wider area, resulting in stronger magnetic field and higher inductance. On the other hand, if the cross-sectional area is smaller, the magnetic field lines are more constrained and they have less room to spread out. This restriction limits the amount of magnetic energy that can be stored, resulting in lower inductance. Lastly, the permeability of the material used in the core of the inductor plays a crucial role in affecting the inductance. Permeability is the measure of how easily a material can be magnetized to become a magnet. For example, using iron or ferrite with higher permeability as a core material can significantly enhance the magnetic field and inductance. On the other hand, if no material is present in the core region, it is considered air core. The absence of a core material means that the magnetic field generated by the coil is not significantly concentrated or enhanced. As a result, air core inductors generally have lower inductance values compared to those with a core material. After identifying these factors, it is now easy to understand how inductors with different inductance values are designed. Increasing the number of turns or the cross-sectional area will result in higher inductance. On the other hand, as the length of the coil increases, the inductance decreases. Additionally, the choice of core material and its permeability can significantly affect inductance. Now, let's discover how inductor works. Our inductor has a fascinating characteristic called inertia. Just like a stubborn friend who doesn't like to change, the inductor tries to resist any sudden changes in electric current. It puts up a fight and tries to maintain the present flow of current. According to a brilliant scientist named Lenz, the inductor creates a special voltage called back electromotive force, or back EMF for short. This is where the name of inductor came from. When the current increases, the inductor induces a back EMF due to the increasing magnetic field. This back EMF is generated in a way that opposes the increase in current, leading to a slower rate of current increase. 
During this process, electrical energy is converted and temporarily stored in the inductor. On the other hand, when the current decreases, the inductor induces another back EMF by releasing the stored energy from the magnetic field. This helps to maintain the current flow and slows down the decrease in current. Let's explore some simple examples to understand the behavior of an inductor. In a simple circuit, if we connect a voltage source directly to a resistor and a bulb, the current will increase immediately, and bulb continuously lights up. However, if we connect an inductor parallel to the bulb, something interesting happens. When we switch on the circuit, the bulb initially shines very brightly, but quickly dim down, and eventually goes off. Let's break down what's happening step by step. Initially, no current flows through the circuit, and the current is zero. As we turn on the switch, the current across the inductor begins to increase. However, the inductor resists this sudden increase by generating a strong back electromotive force. It acts like a load, where a larger voltage dropped across it, while absorbing energy in the form of a magnetic field. This process is often referred to as charging the inductor. Since the bulb is connected in parallel to the inductor, it shares a similar voltage. Therefore, a larger current flow through the bulb, making it appear very bright initially. As the charging process continues, magnetic field of the inductor builds up and becomes stronger. On the other hand, the induced back EMF and voltage across inductor decreases over time. This indicates that the resistive force from the inductor becomes weaker and weaker, allowing more current to flow through the inductor easily. To visualize this, the reduction in voltage across the inductor also affects the bulb connected in parallel. The lower voltage means less current flows through the bulb, causing it to gradually dim down. This phenomenon demonstrates how the inductor reacts to changes in current by inducing a back EMF. It's similar to when you are on a train, and when the train starts moving and accelerate, we feel a force holding us back. This force is the result of our body's inertia, and we act like an inductor, trying to resist this change in motion. However, as body adjusts to the new speed, and become synchronized with the train's movement, we feel that the inertia diminished. Let's now consider what happens when we switch off the circuit. In a regular circuit with just a resistor, the current will decrease rapidly, and the bulb turns off almost instantly. However, when an inductor is present in the circuit, the inductor exhibits its inertia property and tries to resist the decrease in current flow through it by inducing a back EMF. This phenomenon is referred to as discharging. During the discharging process, the inductor acts like a power source to maintain the current flow, causing the bulb to light up for a short period. But, how does the inductor maintain the current flow? Remember that the energy is stored in the magnetic field during the charging process. Now, when the switch is off, the magnetic field collapses, and the magnetic energy stored is converted back into electrical energy to the bulb. A voltage is induced, but it decreases rapidly. Eventually, the current reduces to zero, and the bulb completely goes off. This is similar to inertia of a person inside a moving train. When the train suddenly breaks, you feel a force pushing you forward. This is because of the inertia of your body, that tends to maintain its forward motion, even though the train is stopping. Similarly, the inductor which doesn't like changes, discharges to keep the current flowing, and provides energy to the bulb. From these examples, we can observe that inductor only induced a back EMF or voltage when there are changes in current, but not in a steady state. Now, let's explore how an inductor operates in an AC circuit. But before that, let's consider what happens when we connect a resistor to an AC power source. In an AC circuit, the voltage and current undergoes periodic changes in magnitude and direction, alternating between positive and negative values. We notice that the voltage and current are in phase, meaning they change simultaneously, but their magnitude might be different. However, if we connect an inductor to AC power source, an interesting phenomenon occurs. The inductor will always try to resist these changes in current by constantly charging and discharging its magnetic field. As a result, we notice a phase shift between the voltage and current waveforms. In a pure inductive circuit, the current lags 90 degrees behind the voltage. 
However, in practical, there may be slight lower than ideal 90 degrees phase shift due to the presence of resistance in wire coils. The special characteristics and working principle of the inductor have made it an incredibly versatile component, widely used in various applications, including electrical, electronics, and telecommunication systems. For example, a simple transformer may consist of two inductors. In an AC system, it takes advantage of the changing magnetic field in the primary coil to induce a voltage in the secondary coil through electromagnetic induction. With appropriate design on number of turns of both primary and secondary coils, transformers play a crucial role in power distribution systems, stepping up the voltage for efficient transmission and stepping down the voltage for efficient use of electrical energy. Another application is found in reactors, which are essentially inductors. Reactors utilize its characteristic of opposing changes in current. By introducing reactor into a circuit, it resists sudden changes in current, preventing damage to equipment and helping to maintain system stability. Moreover, inductor loops in traffic system consist of wire coils. These inductor loops are embedded in the road surface to detect the presence of vehicles at intersections. When a vehicle passes over the loop, its metal body interacts with the magnetic field generated by the inductor loop, causing a change in the inductance. This change is detected by the traffic light control system, signaling the presence of a vehicle. Recently, inductors are also found in various inventions, such as induction cooker and wireless charging technology. However, the applications of inductors extend beyond these examples. Although inductor is just a simple wire coil and may appear stationary and unassuming, but it makes significant contributions to the functionality and efficiency of the electrical and electronic systems we rely on today. That concludes our topic today. If you have learned something from our video, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on the notification bells, and share it with others. Thank you.